appreciate it, guys. I'm going to try and get you guys out as quickly as possible because all the coaches said you guys still have stuff to do after I talk. So if anything, just be happy for this little break because I saw how hard they were working you guys out there. So enjoy this shade while you have it. I'm about to finish working you guys later on. As you said, I'm Jamar Nesbitt. Um, I played in the NFL for 11 years. Uh, my, I played with three different teams. I was with Carolina Panthers for four years, uh, from the years of 99 to 2002. I was with the Jacksonville Jaguars for one uh, in 03. And my last six years that I played in the league was with the New Orleans Saints. I was there from 2004. My last game finishing with the Super Bowl in uh, February 2010. Um, a little bit about me real quick. <coughs> I was born and raised in uh, West Germany, so no, not in the United States. I didn't play football until I started in high school, about the 10th grade. Uh, and actually, I played JV in my 10th grade year. I wasn't even on varsity. Uh, I just started late. Um, other than that, I went to University of South Carolina. Started as a true freshman, first team all SEC all the way through, thinking everything was great. Uh, come to the draft in. April of 99, I wasn't drafted. Um, I went undrafted. So, what does that mean? That means when everybody else was getting their name called, I was sitting at home with a bunch of people at a party looking awfully foolish and silly. Uh, suffice it to say, went to the Carolina Panthers, quote unquote, walked on. I uh, was the only undrafted free agent rookie to make that team that year. Uh, there were about 40 other guys that kind of came out there. There were a bunch of guys that they had drafted, I think 12. Um, it was myself in that class. It was, let's see, who was there? Mike Rucker was in that class. Uh, Hannibal Navies was in that class. Um, a few others and myself. We were the only three to really kind of have a career coming out of that class. So even though you make it to the NFL, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to last that long. Uh, going from there, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about expectations. I'm going to talk about expectations that you put on yourself and then expectations that others put on you and then how you deal with those expectations. All right? Now I'm going to do something a little bit differently. So when people come to speak to you guys a lot of times, they don't ask for your input. They don't ask for you to kind of talk back. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go around the room. I'm going to pick probably about 10 to 15 people. I'm going to ask you your name. I'm going to ask you what grades you're going into, what sports you play, and what do you want to get out of this opportunity that you guys are having these four days. All right, so kind of have those answers in your head. And while I'm speaking, I'm just going to stop, and I'm going to point to somebody, and I want you to be able to give me that information that I just asked you about. All right? So here we go. Expectations. What are expectations? All right, give me somebody, somebody little. Little man right there. What are expectations? So what do you think expectations are? Things that people say nice to you. Okay. That, that, that's, if you're lucky, that, that's exactly right. His answer was things that people say nice to you. For example, I think you're a smart person. You're going to do something well in the future. All right? Somebody give me an example of a bad expectation that somebody has said to you. And I want it to be personal because you're not going to get anything out of this unless you put something into it. So give me something that's personal that somebody might have said to you that was a bad expectation or something that somebody said that made you feel bad about what you were doing. Let me write it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be your friend. It hurts, correct? And you don't know why that person doesn't want to be your friend. It's not quite, not really an expectation, but it's something that it affected you, correct? All right. Now look. Go ahead, go for more. I had one where, when I was younger, kids told me. I, mean, uh, I had some of my peers who told me that they didn't expect me to do well in sports because I was small. That was an expectation. All right, perfect. So now coaches kind of getting to where we want to go to. People look at other people and they make assumptions and judgments. All right? So now I can look at the young lady that's here and say because she's the only girl that's here, she's not going to work hard. She's not going to run fast. She's not going to be as strong as some of the guys or as most of the guys that are out here. And she's not going to be good at sports. Now, I've sat out here and I've watched her work. As a matter of fact, she's kind of worked outworked a lot of the guys that have been here. Yeah. All right. 
So now that would be wrong on my part to just assume by looking at her that that's what's going to happen. All right? That was a bad assumption. That was a bad expectation that I placed upon her that she had no control over. And that's, what I'm, that's the point I'm trying to get to you guys. You cannot control the expectations that others put on top of you. You understand? Let's put it another way. How somebody else looks at you or thinks about you should not determine how you feel.